Hello and welcome. On the first episode of this Analytica video, I've analyzed a few water samples for anions and complained about a part I needed to complete the cation side of the ionic makeup of my samples. So the delivery finally happened, I was able to finish this long overdue cation video. I respect the postal services and I understand the current situation, but from pickup to delivery, it took almost 20 days. I could have walked the distance and beat the postal services by a day. Anyway, setting up for a new set of analytes requires to establish a new concentration of mobile phase, identify all the peaks and retention time, recalibrate and reanalyze. And even after all of this, I am still having problems with sodium and ammonium separation. Magnesium and rubidium elude at exactly the same time. And so does calcium and cesium. So plenty more of work to do. But I can now analyze low PPM levels of lithium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, the ammonium ion, and depending on the sample, cesium and rubidium. So here's my tap water again. And take a look at the number of total ionic species detected in PPM. 36. Now compare this with the result I've obtained earlier from the anion analysis. 48. So 36 and 48 is 84. So if you remember the TDS meter and conductivity, here's the reading from the same tap water. 88. So we can determine about 95% of the total ionic content of this water. So this gives us a good idea of what kind of salts are present in this water. Furthermore, with calcium and magnesium, I can now calculate the hardness. And this gives us a value of 89, which is a moderately hard water. Hardness could be a plumbing or an industrial problem, but not so much of a health hazard. I also had a filter, which I got rid of for being a complete waste of money, as you can see. But at the end of this video, I'll show you how I made it work a lot better. Now, I knew what to expect from bottled water, since the minerals are indicated on the label. But I did verify there was nothing exotic or out of specification. And since the concentration is not mentioned, this was not really a waste of time. And they are very consistent with the anion analysis. The purified water is also very pure. And the alkaline water has the most sodium, calcium, and magnesium. My uh, river sample was ran at 110 dilution, which uh, give me a way to verify the calibration on my pipettes. Sodium is everywhere, so no surprise here. Calcium is also very abundant. But then there's also a bit of magnesium and potassium. Speaking of potassium, here's a quick bonus fact. The name potassium derived from pot ash because of the alkaline ashes left over after burning wood or vegetation. After dissolving some ashes from my grill in deionized water, the pH increase and potassium is very much present, even at 100 dilution. The water filtration system has a cartridge containing what I suspect to be nothing more than activated carbon, which is fancy talk for powdered charcoal. I removed it and replaced it with nuclear grade mixed bed resin available on Amazon, five pounds for $40. With a bit of cotton balls, I can keep the resin from leaving the filter and then add the mixed bed before trying it out. With more cotton balls to restrict the flow and allow full contact between resin and water, I was able to reduce the concentration of calcium, magnesium, potassium down to a few ppm or lower. Sodium is very hard to get rid of, but the longer the water is in contact with the resin, the better it gets, even down to my deionized water level. Now, is this water safe to drink? Probably. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but if it can reduce the ionic concentration from this to this, it may be okay. So this is probably not your first YouTube video and you know what to do, thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one and thank you for watching.